Hi everyone, Raghav here, back with another video again. In this video, I will show you how to build this beautiful dashboard in Python using Dash and Plotly libraries. Before we dive into the code, I will show you a brief demo of this dashboard. In this dashboard, you can see daily trends for COVID-19 cases in a line chart. And you can select any country from the drop-down. Also, the cards up here show the overall recovered, confirmed and dead cases for that country. And at the bottom, uh, we have a slider which you can use to smoothen the curve in order to see a moving average of 5 days, 1 week, a fortnight or if you want to see daily cases, you can even do that. So this graph shows you how many daily cases are being added for that country on that given day. So all in all this dashboard is quite functional and in this video I am going to show you how to build this dashboard in Python. So let's get started. So here you can see uh, the Jupyter Notebook which has all the code uh, used to generate the dashboard. Uh, you can use any tool to write your code like Sublime Text, Atom, Visual Studio Code etc. However when I am starting to play with something and learning it, I prefer to use Jupyter Notebook. Also, it is easy to mark up for tutorial purposes and hence I'm using Jupyter Notebook uh, for this tutorial. By the way, I've shared this notebook on GitHub like I always do for all my videos. Uh, the link is in the description below and uh, I regularly create such videos on data science topics. And if you want to watch all my other videos, I will request you to please subscribe to my channel and also hit the bell icon for getting notified when I publish a new video. Uh, with that out of the way, let's dive right in. So here you have the first cell uh, about the dependencies that I'm importing here. We need pandas library, plotly and dash. Uh, if you don't have them installed, uh, you can run these uh, pip install commands either on your command prompt in your virtual environment or you can directly run it from the uh, Jupyter notebook as well. If you just uncomment these, yeah, it will run. So after importing my dependencies, I am getting the data. Uh, these two cells are for getting the data into my notebook. I am using three data sets. One contains the confirmed cases for each day. The second one contains all the number of deaths and third one contains the number of recovered people. And these three data sets are maintained by Johns Hopkins University in their GitHub repository. I have used them in my previous videos as well. If you want to check them out uh, for visualizations, uh, you can see the card on the right top right. Next I am importing the data from these URLs using the pd.readcsv function. It's a function in the pandas library and I am storing them in these three objects. Uh, the next three cells uh, contain the code for processing the data in order to prepare it for our dashboard. First function is converting the raw data set into a time series for a particular country that you pass in. So when you select a country from the drop down this function will prepare the time series for that country and return that as a data frame. So here I am selecting the data for that country and then I am transposing it and truncating the first four rows because they contain some latitude longitude information which I am not plotting on my graphs so I am just removing them by using this. And then I am summing up all the different rows if there are for a particular country. Some countries have different states. so. This will help in summing them up and then I'm do using the diff function uh, which will give us the delta. So our raw data set contains a time series data where every day the data is increasing and all the new cases are being added to the previous day and are being stored for that current day. The diff will give us the delta between the two days. Then I'm using the rolling function which will help in smoothing the graph. So this is a rolling window which you can select as the slider that I showed you. Uh, you can select 3, 5, 7 or 14 or you can go down to 1 for daily cases. So after the rolling window, uh, we also need to provide what it needs to do with that rolling window. Uh, so I am using the mean function here. So it will get, get the average for that particular window. And then I am selecting uh, all the rows after first 40 days because for first 40 days the data was not large so that it can be well represented on the graph. So I am just truncating it using uh, this arbitrary number. You can fine tune it based on your uh, scenarios. And then I am just returning this as a data frame from this function. So in the next function I am getting the overall total for the whole world. So I am just passing the data frame. So for 
the confirmed cases i'm passing the confirmed data frame and it will give me the total sum of the confirmed cases for the overall world and similarly for dead and recovered this is also shown in the cards on the dashboard uh, third function is to get the country total uh, it's similar to the overall total just that i'm using this filter for the particular country that the drop down is selecting and it will return the sum for those countries so i'm here getting the confirmed country total dead country total and received country total that's pretty much the data processing that we need to build our dashboard. In the next cell, I'm creating the line chart for the confirmed cases as shown on the dashboard. Uh, so here I'm using the plotlypx.line function to plot uh, the line chart based on the data frame that is returned from my process data function. And also these are some minor layout updates that I'm doing on the line chart like centering the title and then uh, giving the color to the background and the paper color and also naming the axis of the chart and then i'm returning this as a figure object which will be used by the dash app when we uh, show it on the dashboard all right so we have reached the part where we are building our dash application so uh, we start with defining the external style sheet so i'm using this dbc.themes bootstrap so this dbc is a library uh, which I'm importing here. Uh, this is the Dash Bootstrap Components library. Uh, you can install it and it has got all the Twitter Bootstrap wrapper code uh, which you can use in your Dash app and it gives your uh, dashboard a very uh, good look and uh, I would highly recommend it. So I'm using the uh, theme provided in that particular package and then uh, this is the general uh, app that you need to start with. So dash dot dash will uh, create this app with this style sheet and also the title that you will see on the title of your web page Okay, so next up is the page header uh, page header is this part over here uh, the COVID-19 dashboard and this heading and subheading that you see here and This is all the code that is being used to build it. So uh, Starting from the uppermost function. Uh, I'm generating the page header the main header the big the big header that you saw and the subtitle header uh, these are all uh, dbc components the dash uh, bootstrap components library and in that you have a row function where you can define each row for that bootstrap component and uh, this is the column which i'm using here to uh, generate the title using this function which is this function over here uh, so uh, this is getting the uh, heading and then there's the styling of this and similarly for subhead uh, subheading uh, you will use the subtitle function here this will give you the subtitle of uh, the dashboard and uh, i'm at the end returning this header which i'll be using in the app layout later later on in this uh, notebook so that's about page header moving on to the next one for creating the country drop down uh, again i'm using the html div as the object in the html page and uh, the label for select country and dcc dot drop down is a function in the dash core components library which i'm importing in the dependencies so dcc drop dcc dot drop down will give me the drop down that you see on the dashboard uh, over here so coming back here uh, you can see uh, here i'm creating the drop down list basically so first of all you need the list of all the countries so this function will give me list of all the countries from my confirmed data set and uh, using this list i am converting it into a format which is used by the drop down so you need it in a label comma value uh, dictionary object uh, which you need to uh, create uh, before you pass it to the drop down so here you pass create drop down list which is this function and this will create your drop down in the dashboard in the next cell, I'm creating a container for the graph uh, for the figure world trend function that I created up here to create the line chart. I am putting it in a container dcc.graph uh, which will be shown on the dashboard and will be used in the app layout later on in the notebook. So this function will be called to produce this graph and show it in that dcc.graph container. 
so that's uh, what this function is doing okay so next function is the generate card content which is used to create the content for a particular card so i have three cards uh, being sh being shown on the dashboard one for recovered second one for confirmed and a third one for dead and this function will create particular card that i want so here in generate cards i'm calling this function with these three values recovered confirmed or dead and based on that it will generate that card for me and colors i am i'm using the color equal to success color equal to warning or color equal to dark in order to generate these three green yellow and black colors so this generate card content will actually create that particular card with the value that i'm passing in so this is the value of the number of dead or number of confirmed and overall value is the overall world total that i'm passing in here and it will have one main heading and another a subheading so if you see here this is the main uh, value and this is the sub value which is the overall world total so this generate card section will create those three cards and this function will be used later on in the app layout uh, in the notebook next section is for the slider uh, so get slider function there is an html div that i'm adding it adding to it and dcc.slider is the dash core components uh, function uh, which is used to create a slider and i'm just having these uh, five points on it you can have it as a continuous slider as well but for my functionality i just need these five points so i'm defining them here and then uh, also uh, adding some text like for the user to see what this slider is for so this function will also be used in the app layout next up is the app layout it will arrange all your components in a particular order so page header uh, i'm just calling that generate page header function that i created above then this layout variable i'm assigning it a dbc.container which is from the dash bootstrap components package and then I'm calling them in order. So first I'm generating the page header, then the page subtitle, then I have a horizontal break. And then I'm generating the cards using this function. Then again, I have a horizontal break. Then this function here creates the dropdown. And this function here creates the graph. And this function creates the slider. And also these options are HTML options and just supplying the background color I have tried to make it look like a financial times uh, dashboard so I have used the color that they use so I'm using the background color as I have set it over here this is the background color that uh, financial times uses so I'm using it as well uh, next up so once this function is created I am assigning it to app.layout and this particular uh, assignment creates your app and once you run the server this app.layout is generated and you see the dashboard but before we run the server uh, we need to assign callbacks uh, because uh, we have a user interactable element uh, a drop down as well as a slider so these two are our inputs so this one is the drop down and this one is the slider and based on the values that they get i need to update the output component which is the graph as well as the cards so once the user changes the drop down and selects any other country the graph will get updated as well as the cards will get updated and the way you do it is you use this decorator at the rate app dot callback and you assign all your outputs and then your inputs in a list and then you have this function to which this decorator is attached and you call the respective functions with the input values that you receive from these inputs so you can play around with it it's a bit difficult concept to understand but once you start using it you will get a hang of it which value to use as your input after your callbacks are done uh, after your callbacks are assigned uh, you can just start the server app.run server and you can uh, set host equal to 0.0.0, .0 so that you can access uh, this uh, dashboard from any of your devices in your home network so if you are running it on your PC, you can even access it from your phone. And debug equal to false you need to set because debug equal to true doesn't work in the Jupyter Notebook. And once you have done that, you will be able to access the dashboard using localhost colon 8050, which is the port. I haven't assigned it here, that's the default port. But if you want to change the port, you can just set port equal to 8051, 8052, whatever to your liking. If you are running two different dashboards, you can assign two different ports to it and you will be able to access both of them. So that's about it. Uh, this is the overall dashboard and I'll show you some functionality. So for example, if you 
want to see the US data you can see daily US data here and if you want to see the general trend for a fortnight what's happening so it's going down if you want to see India it's going up uh, quite alarmingly uh, even for one week five days three days even daily if you see it's quite high and here also these numbers change based on the country that you select so for if you select if you're selecting United Kingdom you will see these values are changing so United Kingdom has 270,000 around 270,000 confirmed cases and 37,000 dead so I don't know about these recovered if it is correct because many countries are not publishing their recovered data so it might not be correct as well but this is this is coming from the data set that i have imported from the johns hopkins github repository so here you have it uh, this is the overall dashboard that i wanted to show you how to create it i hope you have uh, got a hang of it how to create a dashboard in dash from scratch if you are comfortable with creating this i would also suggest you do these exercises like generating similar line graphs but for dead and recovered which i have not generated and show them on the sides like in this row itself a quick hint would be to just call another function in this dbc.row which will have first column and third column as well so you can have three columns inside it other exercises that you can do generate a logarithmic graph so currently it is just the daily cases you can even generate a logarithmic graph to know the trend or the doubling rate of the cases or you can write a function to download the latest data at a set frequency currently if you run this dashboard whatever was the data at that point in time when you started this notebook that will only be used by the dashboard and if you want to refresh the data you will have to stop it and then start it again but you can create a job in your system which can directly download the data and store it as a file on your system and set it at a regular frequency if you are on linux you can use a cron job if you are on windows you can use a windows scheduler for that so it's for you as an exercise and fourthly if you want to deploy it to a web server so that so that it's accessible worldwide you can do that as well uh, i have done it and i can show it to you if you want just let me know in the comments below all right guys that's it from my side we have discussed about how to build a beautiful dashboard in python and i hope it was helpful for you please do let me know if you like the video by pressing the like button also comment if you have any feedback or message me on twitter at the rate data raga and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel until then have a nice day stay healthy keep safe and see you in my next video bye bye